if we superimpose on that a bullseye, that's, you know, the, the asteroid targeting the Earth, this is in fact, show the red line now, this is in fact where we now think the asteroid will hit. It's somewhere within that red line, and as you can see, quite clearly, it's going to miss the Earth by quite, uh, quite a bit. That's why the scientist is saying now it's basically zero probability. Don't get out your steel umbrella yet, Charlie. <laughs> well, well, no, but uh, I was just going to ask you, do we need more time to track this, or are we pretty sure of that? Yeah, we are, but gee, they, even with the uncertainties, they've taken those uncertainties into account, and even with that uncertainty, you see it, it's somewhere within the broad range of that red line. They, we're not quite sure where, but even when you take those uncertainties into account, it's not, it doesn't look at all like it's going to even come close to the Earth. We have had in the past, yep. not in yours in my lifetime, but we <laughs> have had in the past uh, some major asteroids hit the Earth. Well, you know, I, I think we, we're living in the midst of a cosmic firing range, and most of the bullets are coming from the asteroid belt somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. It's basically rubble left over from when the solar system was formed. They come in basically three categories, these bullets, and I have a series of graphics here. Category one, which is the smallest, Typically, these are asteroids that are hundreds of feet across. Uh, they uh, happen to hit the Earth about every 10,000 years. They're the size of about a hill as I say, hundreds of feet across typically, and they have the capacity to destroy a city. Now, back in 1908, uh, one such category uh, asteroid or comet hit Siberia and demolish an area about 37 miles across. Now, had that hit New York City, Charlie, that would have had the capacity of destroying the mm. whole of New York City and millions of people. It was a rural mm. area, so we lucked out. Category two is a little more severe. Uh, this happens to hit the Earth roughly every million years. We have a category two typically the size of a mountain. We're talking about a mile to three miles across. Has the capacity of destroying an entire civilization, and that's the one we were talking about now, the XF, XF11. So fortunately, it's going to miss us. And finally, category three, which is the most severe category, happens to hit the Earth about every 30 million years or so. It's the size of several mountains strapped together and can do an entire species. Now, this is exactly the kind that did in the dinosaurs about 65 million years ago. What we think happens is lots of dust goes up in the air, blocks out the uh, sun, cools the earth by about 20 degrees, Charlie. It's what we call impact winter. And if you think that's not much, think about what would happen if you were to lower the thermostat in your room by about 20 degrees. You'd start going chilly. Fact is, without that much sunlight, the vegetation dies. And uh, in, the, in the case of the dinosaurs, of course, the vegetation was their source of food. All right, Michael Gillen, thanks very much. Obviously, a lot of new science uh, since those asteroids hit. Maybe Scientists talking about we could divert a large asteroid away from the Earth now, but all of this not a problem because this one, is his bullseye showed, going to pass on the other side of the moon. When we come back, George, in fact, they tell CNN's Jeannie Moss, hey, forget about it. <laughs> First, we hear all Earthlings may be sitting ducks, but wait, it's too soon to duck. I think it's full of baloney, exaggerated, you know what I mean? Turns out the only asteroids or comets hitting the Earth may be on movie screens. Somebody dial 911! The films Armageddon and Deep Impact are about to enter our atmosphere, though in reality, heaven and Earth are not quite about to collide, and it's further than you think. Further, perhaps, than folks thought waking up Thursday morning. It's coming? It's coming. From where? What can we do? Can we move the Earth to a different location? What can we do? Don't relocate Earth yet, even though a group of scientists had calculated the exact year, date, and hour of the possible collision, October 26th, the Thursday, 30 years from now. That's my question. I mean, how do they know? <laughs> I can't tell you when my dentist appointment is next week, <laughs> let alone when an asteroid is going to hit Earth. In 2028 at 1.30 p.m., Okay, so I'll put that on my calendar. Let's see, leave town in the morning, 1.30, asteroid hits. What asteroid? The asteroid. The first thing most of us did was calculate how old we'd be when the world ends. <laughs> how old do you figure you're going to be then? Dead, hopefully. But I've got sons. I'm going to be 73. Oh, so you'll still be around, because mm -hmm. you look like you're in good shape. How old are you? Come on, you can tell me. Mm, I'll whisper. <laughs> Well, that's how old you're going to be. Oh, my God. And if you think we're pretty dumb to use a calculator, you're 26. So you're going to be, be 58. 56. 56. <laughs> we thought maybe our own cameraman's cap was trying to tell us something. Warning, the Surgeon General cannot save you. Maybe they should switch the millennium clock to time remaining till the asteroid. 
And at a store called Star Magic, there was no run on the spongy space boulder that sells for $4.95. Duck. For a while, we were all suffering from asteroidal itch. Send for preparation A for asteroid. Cooler heads prevailed. If you worry about everything, you'll just worry. Hey, maybe the sky ain't falling after all. Though some were still pinning their hopes on October 26th. My ex-husband's uh, uh, birthday, so I hope it hits him. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. Oh, There's a sentiment for you. Always a silver lining? Oh, oh dear me. All right, now for